Thank you, Kelly. And welcome everyone to Michael's Community Classroom. I hope everyone's doing really well this evening. I am Chris Williams and I'm gonna be your educator or your instructor this evening. I've been a decorative painter all of my life and I've also been a teacher since I was a teenager. So I think we're gonna have a really good time tonight painting Fred and Ginger. We're gonna do some fabric painting. We're using the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints and we're gonna use the Folk Art Textile Medium and I promise we're gonna have a really good time. With me here in the studio tonight is Stephen White. And Stephen is going to be my moderator. He just stepped out into the other room. He's going to man our computer and monitor the chats. So if you have any questions as we go through our lesson this evening, go ahead and type it in the chat and Stephen will either share the comments or ask the questions if he doesn't already know the answers. So we welcome you to participate along with us. I know um, many of our good friends in our Let's Paint with Plaid Facebook community told me that they were all going to sign in and join the class this evening. So welcome to all of my friends and uh, fellow artists. Um, if you are attending this evening and want to paint along, we definitely welcome you to do that. But many people have already told me that they love to watch the classes, take notes, write down instructions, and then follow along when the class is uploaded on Michael's YouTube channel um, sometime within the next 24 hours. Either way you want to participate is perfectly fine for me. So um, without further ado, I just want to go ahead and start in. And Stephen, be sure and let me know if we have any comments or questions. Oh, yeah. Uh, and thank you for joining me, Stephen. You're welcome. Glad to be here. So um, in your sign up, uh, when you register for the class, in your sign up page, you probably noticed that there was a downloadable, both a photograph of tonight's project, as well as our pattern. So when I got this pattern, what I did was I quickly made just a tracing paper line art pattern of my uh, Fred and Ginger. And the reason I put it on the tracing paper is it's a little bit easier to see through. And if we can go to our overhead camera now, I just wanna share with you that I started my project. Here is our apron that I bought at Michael's. And I took just a piece of uh, heavy cardstock cardboard paper and I lined it with a sheet of my waxed paper palette. So the blue tape on the side here is I taped a sheet of the waxed paper palette onto a cardboard. So that gives me a nice firm surface on which to paint against. And then I took my tracing paper uh, design and I laid it on top of the um, outline of the apron. You can kind of see here, I kind of matched up the shape of the bib of the apron. I then used an artist stylus and a little bit of sheet of gray transfer paper. The gray graphite or gray transfer paper has a right side and a wrong side or a business side and a uh, matte side. And once you have your position um, secured, you can even put a little piece of tape down at the bottom here. I then lifted it up. I slid my uh, transfer paper, my graphite between the pattern and my apron. And once I had that where I could see the whole entire pattern line, I used my artist stylus and just simply traced over the pattern lines to transfer the design directly onto my apron. Many people uh, told me they already had theirs pattern. If you do, that's great. If you don't, go ahead and transfer your pattern now. Um, or for those of you that are simply watching this evening and gonna paint later, let me just tell you that I'm gonna bring this up. Maybe you can see it a little bit better if I bring it up closer to the camera. But my pattern lines are kind of dark uh, with my gray graphite, but I did that so that maybe you could see the pattern lines rather than uh, if I were painting this myself at home, I might not press quite as hard with my graphite and my stylus so that I made a lighter transfer. But not to worry because we are going to paint, I'm gonna bring this over so you can see both at the same time. We're gonna paint our little gingerbread, Fred and Ginger first before we paint any of their clothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and I got a little lid here. Any small little dish will work. I'm gonna pour the sake of it not rolling around on my wax paper palette, I'm gonna squeeze out into that little dish a little bit of the folk art textile medium. Folk art textile medium, you can see it's kind of milky, it's white, it's very thin and runny. And so if I just pour that onto my wax paper palette, it might move around too much and puddle. 
or even possibly roll off of the wax paper palette. So I just kind of keep that secure in a safe little um, piece there. We're gonna start with our little gingerbread um, flesh areas or the cookie area, I should say. And I'm going to use Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints. I'm going to use yellow ochre and some bark brown. So just go ahead and squeeze a little bit of each of those colors out onto your palette. If you don't have one of those, basically it is a uh, mustardy golden yellow color and the bark brown is just a nice warm, uh, almost like a milk chocolate Hershey Kiss color that I'm squeezing out onto my palette. I am using the Folk Art Multi-Surface Paints tonight and the Multi-Surface Paints are fabulous for uh, wood, tin, terracotta, glass, ceramics, our fabric that we're gonna do tonight. And the only reason I'm using the textile medium is just to help make that paint flow a little bit faster and quicker for us during class. I'm gonna start out probably with a number um, eight or a number six brush because my face and my arms and legs are a little bit smaller in size. I'm going to thoroughly wet the bristles of my brush fully saturating it with the textile medium. And I'm gonna come over here to Fred and I'm gonna start on his arm and I'm just going to fully load the cookie section, his arm here with the textile medium. And I do suggest working small sections at a time. So I'm just going to work on his arm and then his chest area. Again, I'm just kind of filling that in. You can see that the textile medium is a milky white color. Once I have just a few sections, I don't want to do his whole entire body, just a couple sections at a time, filled with the textile medium. I'm now going to stroke my brush up, and I did not clean my brush. I still have textile medium in it. I'm going to stroke up into the puddle of the yellow ochre, our golden yellow color. And now I'm going to just paint that directly on top of the area that we just applied the textile medium to. One reason why I am, have this mounted on a little cardboard is to give myself a nice firm surface on which to paint. And another reason why I used the um, uh, wax paper palette, you could also use a sheet of waxed paper on your cardboard surface. The reason I did that is because if by chance you get heavy handed with the paint or the textile medium and you might get a little bleed or run under through the uh, fabric, there's just maybe a little bit on my finished one here. Can you see just barely bleeding through? This will protect your work table or your work surface. All right, and I am using a nice kind of firm bristle brush to kind of work that paint up into the weave of that uh, apron. And somebody asked me uh, the other day during our, I'm gonna continue and move to another section. Somebody asked me the other day, do I have to do this on an apron? Little Fred and Ginger, gosh, they could be painted on so many different things. You can use um, t-shirts or tablecloths, napkins. There's so many things you could do with this cute little project. I chose the apron that is available at Michael's because I was thinking of the holidays ahead as everyone begins to think about their favorite Christmas cookie recipes or preparing the sweets for our Thanksgiving tables. It might be fun to kind of wear a very fun and painted uh, apron. So you'll notice now that I just painted his other arm and his two legs. I did not clean my brush. I went straight from the yellow ochre into the textile medium and just brushed that on very quickly. And now I'll repeat and do the same thing again. I'm going to now paint those solid with the yellow ochre directly on top of the area where I have applied the textile medium. This is a project that uh, can be done in just about an hour if you paint pretty quickly. If you get lost or you're, you're not painting along quite as quickly, by all means, just enjoy the class, watch, take notes, and you will be receiving a recording of this class so that you can paint this along at your own convenience and perhaps not be rushed. Um, when, once the class has been released on Michael's, YouTube um, channel. I love little gingerbreads for the holidays. I, many people enjoy baking them. So I thought this would just be a fun, fun design to put on an apron. 
And maybe perhaps you just want to put one gingerbread in the center rather than the two. That's something that can be done as well. All right, now what I'm going to do is just fill in his uh, head. That's the only part of the body that's missing yet. So again, I'm going to load my brush with some textile medium, and that is folk art textile medium. And because I did not clean my brush out, you're seeing a little bit of that yellow ochre. And I'm going as close to the pattern lines as I can. And I painted mine uh, with the clothing in red because I thought red just pops for Christmas time. But if you want to change the colors of yours, if you happen to be a person who enjoys blues or even greens, or once one of your gingerbreads are red, the other one's dressed in green for Christmas, that would be kind of fun to do too. So you can kind of be creative and come up with your own color scheme. All right, hey, now the last. Yes. Oh, I've got a question for you just while you're doing that. Um, okay, Steve. Janet asked, will the paint stay on the fabric if it is not the multi-surface? So she has textile medium, uh, but she doesn't have um, uh, bark brown. So she was going to see if she could use her regular folk art. Yes, yes. And that was Janice, right? Janet. Oh, Janet. Okay, I'm so sorry. Janet, yes, I am using the multi-surface formula. However, if you only have the original formula of folk art acrylics, as long as you're working with the textile medium, that's the folk art textile medium, that will keep your folk art original formula uh, a full adherence to the fabric. Um, one thing that I uh, will talk about at the end of our project is how to heat seal to cure the paint onto your surface. Uh, another good thing to do is to start out with pre-washing your fabric. Um, most designers or most manufacturers have sizing in the fabric. And that sizing sometimes you can feel is a little bit stiff. That sizing sometimes prohibits the paint from uh, really in, attaching or adhering itself to the fibers of the fabric. Um, mine has been pre-washed and then I transferred my pattern on. Uh, if you didn't, this might be something that you'll just want to hand wash just to make sure that you um, Aren't, if you have still the manufacturer sizing in it, you may want to just hand wash it to make sure that the paint does make full contact to the surface. All right, I think we've got them all done in, all the flesh areas or the cookie areas. I'm now going to add just a little bit of textile medium to that flat brush. I did not clean out the yellow ochre. And now I'm going to take and go just a corner of my brush into the puddle of the bark brown. If you don't have that milk chocolate bark brown color, you could use a burnt sienna, you could use a Pueblo, you could even use a burnt umber, which is a little bit deeper brown, but you can use just a little bit of brown. And I'm gonna show you on my palette here that I still have some gold color, some yellow ochre in my brush, but I also just now have the brown on the, let me raise this up so you can see. I now just have a little bit of brown on the corner or the side of the brush. So with that brown area of the brush, I'm going to begin kind of shading some of the cookie area. And I'm going to touch down and just kind of walk that across the area where the yellow ochre is. And I'm going to come around the top and also around where my heart is. And then I'm going to do the same thing for all the other sections. So wherever I have uh, it next to some of the red or underneath an area, I'm just kind of brushing that in and patting it around so that I can work the brown to create some shading behind his suspenders, behind his uh, little pant legs when we get down to the bottom here. Again, it's a very small amount of that brown. And I'm working it into the wet yellow ochre. Even though we did all of the areas, that wet, that yellow ochre paint is still wet because of the textile medium that we added into our fabric here. And now I'm scooting down to the legs and the top of the leg that meets the uh, pant leg of his little short outfit here has some shading. And I'm also going to shade where the legs go down and around the bottom of his feet. All that brown is kind of going around the cut edges of the cookie. 
And you're just kind of patting it on and blending it just by keep stroking and patting. So what I've done so far is I have put the uh, folk art textile medium on all of the cookie areas, all of the flesh areas. Then we added the yellow ochre to give the body the cookie color. And now we're shading around the outside edge of all the yellow ochre areas. And I'm just kind of patting and kind of almost like you're scrubbing some of that color in so that the brown is blending well with that yellow ochre or the body of the cookie. And if you want, you can paint every single part of the flesh of the cookies all at one time. So the design that we're going to do for our ginger, this is Fred, and the one we're going to do for ginger is exactly the same way. Every once in a while, I load my brush with a little bit more of the textile medium. And on his head, the brown is going to be to the outside of this little circle and down towards where his neck is, along where that we're going to paint a little bow tie. And then back up to the other side. And every so often I am stopping to reload my brush with either a little bit more of the textile medium or a little bit more of the color that I'm working with. And right now we're still adding the shading on Fred. And I'm gonna put a little bit of shading underneath what will be the white fur of his cap. And as we do this, you can see it can go pretty quickly. And we will go ahead now and I'm going to go ahead and stop and I'm gonna show you how to do the red area on him. So I'm gonna clean my brush out first with a little bit of water, blot on my paper towel, and we're gonna go ahead and work on his little red outfit here. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna pick up the textile medium. I'm fully loading that flat brush with the textile medium. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on his little bloomer shorts and his red suspenders. And I'm also going to uh, do the hat and the bow tie, but we'll wait and do work those in sections. So all the clothing on our little Fred gingerbread boy is all done in red. And as I said earlier, if you would like to do him in red and perhaps ginger in green, feel free to change it up and do your own color scheme. I think they would look really cute in just about any color that you wanted. She could even be in pinks and he could be in blues. But I think the red and green kind of just looks great for the upcoming Christmas holidays, winter holidays. You could put them all in blues and light blues and make them look like they've been out in the winter, like a winter wonderland with snowflakes. As I said, we'll work a section at a time, just kind of like we did when we were putting the flesh colors in. So basically I did his shorts and his two suspenders. I'll save his hat and his bow tie for another section here in just a moment. I'm going to add red now onto my palette and the red I'm working with is apple red. I'm also gonna add a little bit of orange on my palette and that is pure orange. So we want a bright Christmas red and a bright orange on our palettes. And, Chris, and what we're going- You, um, you yes. wanna talk about washability? A little bit just um, in case you know anybody out there is still wondering and we've um, haven't touched on it I don't think so it might be good to just mention. Yes I plan to talk about the heat setting and curing and washability in great detail at the very end of the class but okay. if you follow all of the heat setting instructions uh, your item can be thrown in the washer and dryer but what I want to get us through the painting part first before we talk about heat setting. Sure. I just okay. don't want to confuse anyone just yet. Absolutely. Okay, thank you though. Mm -hmm. You can help me remember next, Stephen. I got you. Okay, so now what we've got, we've got, remember the two suspenders and his little shorts are based in with the textile medium. I'm now going to paint them in just solid or opaque, almost like I'm color book painting, in with our bright red, our bright Christmassy red color. This is apple red that I'm working with. I'm still working with the same small little flat brush. And I am just kind of scrubbing that color on through the weave of the little 
canvas of our apron here, painting it in solid. And I am going to cover all of the shorts, right leg and left leg, as well as the two suspenders. And having that textile medium in there is going to allow the paint to really fully adhere to the fabric. And it's also going to give you um, a system where it's going to dry and it will be flexible. It won't feel crunchy. It won't feel stiff. It will be very flexible when you're all done with the painting and it's been heat set and cured. And as we said a moment ago, I'm going to go through great detail of how to heat set once we finish our painting. And I want to tell you that it is something that is permanent. You can then wash your item and you can wear it and wash it. And this could be something that perhaps is a, a treasure that you'll have and bring out every holiday season uh, and enjoy every year. Chris, do you expect to need more than one coat for this? No, one coat is gonna be all we're gonna do. Awesome. No need for more coats than that, Stephen. Okay, so now I just roughly kind of quickly put on the red of his little shorts and his um, suspenders. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, I'm gonna bring this up so you can see it up closer. We're gonna start adding a little bit of shading color and highlighting color. So when you look at his little bloomers here, can you see like between his legs, it's a little bit darker uh, on the shorts itself around the area. Let me see if I can point around the areas where his suspenders meet the body of his shorts is a little bit darker. And then the opposite areas like the outside edges of his shorts are lighter in color. And that's where we're gonna put the pure orange. So what we're gonna do first is we will shade first. So the area I'm talking about shading is again, like in this area here, the inverted V between his legs. We're also gonna shade around where his suspenders meet his um, shorts. And then we will highlight on the outside corners of his uh, outer short areas. And we're gonna highlight where the suspenders, on the suspender itself, where it meets the body of the shorts. So to do that, I'm going to work with the apple red in my brush. I did not clean out my brush. I still have some textile medium in it. And I'm gonna to go to the bark brown and I'm gonna pull out some of that bark brown so that I get a brush that is loaded with red and the brown in the color. So I'm gonna come up close so you can see there's some red and some brown in that flat brush. So the areas where the brown shading is going to be, or almost like a deeper burgundy, this brown with the red is gonna give us a burgundy. We're gonna start shading here. And again, same motion, I'm just kind of patting that color on. And you can see how immediately that brown is mixing with the red that we've already got based on his clothing. And it's giving us a beautiful shaded area. And again, I'm just kind of patting that color on and shading like between his legs and across the bottom a little bit. And it blends so beautifully and easy because of the textile medium that we kind of helped put on there. The folk art multi-surface paints do not really require a textile medium, but for our time's sake tonight with our only one hour to be together in class, we need to be able to have that paint move pretty quickly. So I'm just kind of shading around using that textile medium as like a base. Okay. Now, can you everyone see? Let me hold, maybe I can hold it up so you can see quicker. I don't, don't get the paint in the palette there. Here we go. So he shaded between his legs and he shaded along the top of the shorts where his uh, suspenders are meeting the body of the shorts. When we get ready to do the little girl, the same exact techniques are being used. So what I'm gonna do now is just blot my brush a little bit, pick up some textile medium, and we're gonna put some textile medium in the hat. And again, because I had red paint in my brush, it is coming out like a little bit of red with the textile medium, and that's perfectly fine. I'm just putting a layer of the textile medium on the hat 
and kind of working around the area that's gonna be the fur. It's okay if you cover a little bit of that. And then I'm also gonna put some textile medium in his little bow tie. And then just like we did his shorts, we're gonna go ahead and pick up the apple red. And I'm now going to paint that area that we just applied the textile medium. I'm gonna paint that solid in, again, apple red, and just kind of patting that color on. It's just like we're color book painting a specific area. And the same thing, once I get the hat done, we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a bow tie with this apple red. And this is where you could be creative too. And maybe he's got a green bow tie and he's got red clothing. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade both the hat and the bow tie, just like we did the shading on his uh, little bloomers there, his little shorts. So I'm gonna add just a corner of my brush into, and I'll stroke it on here, a corner of my brush in the um, bark brown color. And the bark brown is gonna be patted on the red of his hat right above where the white is going to be, the white little fluffy part of his, the band on his hat. And it's just patting it on. And then right at the base here where the hat's going to meet the little poof at the bottom of his hat, I'm adding a little bit there as well. Just again, it's just kind of like a pat, pat, pat. I'm patting that color on while allowing that brush to kind of dance along that edge. On his bow tie, think about that center as being a little circle or the knot of the bow tie. We're gonna shade on both the right and the left side of that little circle in the middle. We'll leave the circle right now. So I just wanna put a little bit of shading on the bow itself, on the right side, right up next to the little circle, on the left side, right up next to the little circle. And now I'm gonna block that brush to remove that brown. And I do wanna pick up just a little bit of textile medium in my brush, blend it on the palette. And to highlight these areas, we're going to use the pure orange that we squeezed out onto the palette. And I'm gonna put a little bit of pure orange on his pant leg here on the outside corners. And if you find that your orange is kind of sinking into the red a little bit, you can even add a little bit of white on your palette, and I'll do that here just to show you one. I'm gonna squeeze out a little bit of wicker white out onto my palette. And with that side of the brush that has the orange in it, like I scooted up next to that puddle of orange, I can do the same thing by scooting up into the wicker white and making a lighter value orange with the pure orange and the wicker white on one side of the flat brush. And I could even dance that color on. And you'll notice on this side of the pant leg, how much lighter the highlight is. I'll hold it up again so you can see. Adding a little bit of white to that orange. Can you see on the left-hand side how it's a little bit lighter in value than just the right side that only had the pure orange? So you can add a little bit of white to yours if you want, if your pure orange is not showing up enough for you. And that's personal preference. It depends upon how much you want it highlighted. And again, I'm just kind of patting and scrubbing that highlight color on. That same color is what I'm gonna use on the suspender where it meets the body of his pants. And I'm gonna scoot up the suspender a little bit. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And again, this is pure orange with just a touch of wicker white. And I'm going on the suspenders as well. Okay, Chris, I've got a question for you that, or at least a, a, right. a comment that, that, it's a question that has been answered, but I'd like you to touch on it if you, if you could. Sure. Um, somebody asked, what exactly is textile medium? They understand the difference between blending gel and floating medium, but they haven't worked with textile medium before. Uh, and, okay. uh, and Colleen right. jumped in and said, if she understands it correctly, then it helps the paint adhere to fabric and make uh, the fabric of the apron a little more flexible. 
It does. And I'm going to show you this little uh, lid to a canning jar is what I used my textile medium in. And I'm going to show you up close here. Textile medium is milky white in color. And as I move it around here, you can see it almost looks like milk. It's very thin in consistency. And that's why I suggested putting us it in a separate little container rather than adding it directly onto your palette because you don't want it to run around and kind of pool into the other colors. Textile medium itself is a fabric painting medium. You use this to help the fabric, in this case, to move around and spread easily on the fabric, but you also use it as an adherence property. It will allow that acrylic paint to really kind of blend down. If you think about the fibers of the fabric where fibers are all interwoven, uh, that you want a, a fabric medium or a paint that will sink down into all of those fibers and become one with the fabric. And this folk art textile medium, once you paint on here, it's very thin, uh, flexible, it dries very soft. There's no crunches or crackles. If you were to use just a, a pure acrylic paint by itself without using a textile medium, and if by chance you painted very heavily, it might dry. And when you start trying to bend or maneuver the fabric, it's not going to be soft. It could be dry very hard and crunchy or crispy. It could even crack on you. So the textile medium helps to make the paint more permanent and it dries flexible. And you do need to heat set it and cure it and then it becomes permanent and washable. So when we finish our little fella here, I'll go into great detail on that. Any other questions there, Stephen? I think we're caught up. Okay, great. All right, so we talked about highlighting his shorts and his suspenders, but let's do the same thing with his little bit of his bow tie and his hat. So again, using that mixture of the pure orange and a little bit of the wicker white, I'm going to now kind of just highlight the sides, the outside edges of his little bow is bow tie. So we're gonna highlight the left side, flip your brush over and highlight the light side. We can even add a little bit of a brightness in that center little knot of his bow tie. So again, that is pure orange with a little bit of the wicker white. And again, our textile medium that we put down as a base first is there still, it's very wet still, and it's keeping that paint um, kind of fluid so that it blends well together. Once we highlighted the right side, the left side, and the knot of our bow tie, we can also highlight the top of his hat. And that again is the same technique. I'm kind of patting on that mixture of the pure orange with a little bit of wicker white to make a lighter value orange. And I'm just kind of working those bristles, patting and touching and almost kind of like scrubbing it on. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush. And what we're gonna do next, just to talk about the decoration on our gingers, is we're gonna talk about using some white paint and I'm gonna load my brush. I'm gonna use switch to a round uh, liner brush. And so I'm gonna fill that brush with some of the textile medium. I'm gonna come over here to the pile of the white paint that again was wicker white. And I'm gonna pull some of that color out and mix it kind of on the side with that textile medium. If you read the instructions on the textile medium, it will actually tell you to take some of the medium and a palette knife and mix your paint colors just like we did here and mix it with the paint. And it's usually two parts textile medium to one part medium. The technique that I taught you tonight by putting the textile medium solid on an area first is a completely different way to use it, but it still works out beautifully. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna start thinking about the trim work or the icing that you might find on a gingerbread cookie. So let's just give him some buttons down his front here. And this is just by simply using the liner brush and adding some little buttons. He's got buttons that are a little bit bigger in size on the suspenders where they meet his shorts. You can kind of doll him up and give him as much detail as you want. I added a little heart on mine too. And that heart is, you start out kind of like a V 
And then at the top of the V, I kind of made an angle out and then another v, bigger V. So it's kind of like a square at the top of that first V and then make another line down. And you can give them as big a heart or as small a heart as you want. When I painted mine, I left my eyes white as though they were icing. But if you wanted to paint your eyes, uh, perhaps with the brown or even get some black out and paint black eyes, you more than are, are capable of doing that. I just wanted to have it all icing as though he was in fact a cookie. So we will paint his eyes in and they are just solid, uh, like a tall vertical oval shape. And I'm using that liner brush that has been um, filled with the textile medium and some wicker white. So you're just making a solid white oval and it's in a vertical format. Give him two eyes. This liner brush with the textile medium and the white mixture is also used to create the kind of wiggle lines on his arms and his legs. And you can make a small wiggle or the icing lines, or you can get them very tight and close together, but you just kind of make, want to make like icing. Think about when you bake a gingerbread cookie, or perhaps even when you buy a gingerbread cookie, if you're not a baker, uh, you want to, kind of imitate that line of the wiggles of the icing, almost like you're snaking up and down as you go across the area. And you're, so you're gonna do his legs, you're gonna, or his feet, I should say, and his arm, there's just a little bit showing on this arm behind the heart. You can add a little bit around his head from where the hat fur hat is down to like maybe his shoulder and up on the other side. Before you give him a mouth, if you want to, you can add a little bit of a blush with the red. And I went back to my flat brush. This is the same original brush that we were working with. And I'm corner loading, just side loading the brush with a little bit of red. I'm blending on the palette. We don't want his cheeks to be overly red or overly bright, but we do want to give him a little bit of blush. So once I load the brush so that I've got paint just on one corner of the brush, I'm now going to turn it upright so that the brush is now vertical and the red is pointing to the ceiling. Does that make sense? So here I am brushing it down flat. Then I'm going to stop and I'm gonna turn my brush so that it's now upright and the red part of my brush is, uh, is pointing towards my ceiling. And I'm gonna smush that brush down and just kind of tap it. And that tapping is going to give me my little red cheeks. And he can be as red as you want, but that'll give him a little bit of a blush. And then from there, we can add the icing of a smile line going back to our liner brush filled with textile medium that is mixed with the wicker white. And now I'm going to just give him a big smile. Everything I'm teaching you on our little Fred can be all the same instructions repeated to create ginger. And one thing I'm gonna do on while we still have the white is we're gonna go ahead and I think I'll use my flat brush. Go back to the flat brush with the wicker white and the textile medium. And I'm going to just pat on the little pom-pom on his hat. And this, you might wanna let it dry and then come back and give it a little bit more. I do have textile medium in my paint right now. So I did not put the textile medium down first just kind of dancing that brush on to create the fur of his hat and the fur of his pom-pom. I'm filling the brush good and full with the textile and wicker white mixed paint. And I am allowing some of that fluff of his cuff there to fall down onto his forehead too. And I can even put some of it up into the shading of his hat. And you can just kind of add as much texture to that hat as you want. 
we come in there, Stephen. Any questions from anybody? Um, no questions right now. Somebody said that they, they've actually never made a ginger uh, bread cookie before. And I think you should uh, definitely do that after you do this because you're missing out. <laughs> I'm sure it would be a lot of fun to have a recipe. I should have thought about that ahead of time to kind of share with everyone. It'd been mm -hmm. fun to post a recipe for our gingerbread cookies too, but gosh, there's so many out on the internet. It would be great to wear your Fred and Ginger apron while you bake your first batch of gingerbread cookies. The Absolutely. icing part, I think is the most fun. Mm -hmm. There's so many gingerbread cookie cutouts too that you could use to create a fun uh, gingerbread cookie. Somebody a while back had the idea to put this on a tote bag or something. Um, that would be pretty cute, I think. Yes, definitely. Yeah. And that would be fun to carry that tote bag when you go do all your holiday shopping. <laughs> yeah. Great gift too for a, a friend or a neighborhood uh, gift. And maybe even put uh, a fresh bag of gingerbread cookies in the uh, tote bag. And what a lovely gift that would be for the holidays. Yeah, definitely. Somebody else mentioned that they're going to make uh, shirts for their family for the holidays that's a great idea oh that's awesome yeah and it would be so cute for the grandkids too if they were all in gingerbread shirts for the yeah. christmas eve photo Love that. Uh, one thing i'm going to do right now is i did go back to my round little liner brush and i filled it with some textile medium i put some on the palette in a little puddle and then i scooped into our bark brown and i brought a little bit of brown out and i've been sitting here kind of brush mixing the textile medium into the bark brown. And what I'm gonna do is I'll raise this up and show you closer. Now I want you to look at the eye of Fred. And as you're looking at the eye, you can see that it's a little bit darker on the left-hand side of our two vertical ovals. And that's all we're going to do. I'm going to, I'm gonna make sure you can still see this there. I'm going to, with that round liner brush, I'm going to just paint a brown line. And again, that's the bark brown with the textile medium. And I'm going to start at the top and then just brush down, kind of blending a little bit, giving him a little bit of a darker side of one of his eyes. And as I said earlier, if you don't want the icing eye, if you would rather have a black eye or not black eye per se, but... <laughs> eyes that are painted black or even painted our brown. Um, if your gingerbread kind of... man just got in a fight, maybe he could have a black eye, but. <laughs> I hope not though, Stephen, right? Right. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm gonna do is let's go back to our flat brush. I'm gonna fill it with some textile medium and let's move on real quickly and we can get the ha uh, heart done here. I'm gonna do this exactly like we did the red of his little britches or his bloomers there, his shorts and his, everything we've been doing so far. I'm gonna paint it first with the textile medium, making sure that I get that whole heart shape covered really well, all the way to the edges. And then I'm gonna just simply pick up the red. And again, our red is apple red. And I'm gonna load that with the full flat of the brush, both sides, flipping it over. And now I'm going to paint the heart with the apple red, kind of like we just did his little bloomers or his shorts. Make sure our red gets a full heart shape. And the heart can be iced like we did the icing, like mine is, or you can leave it just in the heart shape. Again, this is where you get to kind of be creative and come up with your own little trim if you'd like. I liked the icing look on the heart as well as the uh, gingerbreads themselves. So I'm just quickly covering this heart shape with the red paint after I use the textile medium and just really kind of working the bristles into the fabric, making sure I'm down in the weave of the fabric. I'm gonna block mine and pick up a little bit more. On mine, I did shade the base of my heart with the bark brown, just like we shaded his little shorts. And so I'm gonna side load into that brown with my brush that still has some red into it. And you can see here the bottom, like V, if you will, the bottom point of his heart has been painted 
with the bark brown on top of the red while it was still wet on both sides of the bottom of that heart. So I'm going to keep my brown to the outside of the heart, the brown part of my brush to the outside of the heart, and I'm just going to kind of pat that on and let that kind of shade the heart a little bit. And this, if you choose to add the icing little strokes around the outside of your heart, and or if you try to add a, a message in here, joy, peace, love, whatever you wanna write in here, or maybe you even write the numbers, maybe it's 2021 for the year. Um, this will help all that show up that much more. So I'm gonna let that kind of set for a moment before we put the icing on there. I'm gonna clean my brush out and we can quickly move on to our little gingerbread girl. She's painted exactly the same. If you don't get this done tonight, that's quite all right. You basically know what to do. You're going to fill her legs, her arms and her head solid with the textile medium. And again, I just work on a little section at a time. So for me right now, I probably go ahead and do both legs. And I do this pretty quickly because there's really not a mad science to it. There's not a lot of blending and shading or highlighting. There's not necessary certain brush strokes to do. You're just kind of color book painting in. Remember the base of our cookie was yellow ochre. So I'm picking up some yellow ochre in my brush now that still had some textile medium in it. And I'm now going to paint the cookie part. So that for me, I just started with her feet and her legs kind of painting them in solid. And as I said, when we started out with our little boy, if you wanna do all of the cookie part at one time, then do all the red at one time. If you, were, if you haven't painted with me tonight and you wanna paint yours with the recording later, I think that's the way I would do it. But for time's sake today, I just wanted to get, make sure we got one little cookie done first because this is repetition with the little girl. Chris, we have a question that says, um, do you need to wait for the medium to dry before painting on it? And the answer is no, you do not need to wait. That is 100% correct, Stephen. No, we don't want to wait. We want the paints to blend well with the medium. So I am just kind of brushing on the folk art textile medium on sections. And I'm going to go ahead and do her little head at the same time, working around her little hair bow crease here. I'm going to leave the eyes and that again will be the eyes just like we did our little eye for our gingerbread man for Fred. We're going to be white ovals. That textile medium does just what it kind of sounds like. It's a textile, it's a fabric medium and it allows the paint to have a, a really great bond with your surface. All right, now I'm gonna go straight to my palette to the yellow ochre. And that was again, my, my flesh color or my cookie color. And I'm going to paint that in on my little ginger for the areas that I just put the textile medium, which for me is my two hands and my head. And then what do you think we're gonna do next? We are going to shade these areas with the bark brown, just like we did with Fred. I hope everyone's having a good time tonight, whether you're painting with me or whether you're just observing and watching. And I hope you enjoy to see, uh, I hope you enjoy painting yours. I do hope to see many painted pieces. We have a fabulous Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid, and we love for you to share socially your projects within that group. Use the hashtag Let's Paint Challenge and uh, hashtag Michael's Classes. We love to see what you're doing in our classes. This arm that I'm working on, I picked up a little bit of that bark brown, and I'm beginning to shade the cookie where it comes out or next to her clothing. So like at the top of her arms and along the base of her arms. And again, this is just kind of patting that color on and it blends very, very well because our textile medium and our yellow ochre is still really wet. I'm just kind of patting and scrubbing that color 
along that whole edge. Chris, I wanted to let you know you're getting lots of compliments. Uh, your details are great. Uh, loving this project, looks so cute. Oh, thank you everyone, I hope so. I hope that, uh, thank you for the compliments and I hope to see many, many Fred and Gingers in my future from you all. <laughs> <laughs> As we're, um, I'm looking at the clock, we have about 10 minutes left in our class. I do wanna to get to the areas of talking about a heat setting when you paint on fabric. That's so very, very important. So once I finish this foot here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop for a minute to talk about heat setting and tell you all how to finish your apron. This was a big project to try and get done in an hour, but you have all the instructions to complete your project uh, just by simply repeating what we've already learned. And this recording will be available within 24 hours in the Michaels uh, Community Classroom on YouTube, in the Michaels channel on YouTube. So you will be able to finish your project, or for those of you who haven't painted yet, you'll be able to start your project. The areas of the cookie part, the face, and the arms and the legs are all shaded with our bark brown. And then the icing kind of pops once you get that shading on there. All right, I'm gonna stop for just a moment. I can come back to it, but I do wanna get, make sure I tell you all about, once we uh, finish the icing on our little girl, then the clothing, you can see she's got a little red jumper, and she's got a white band, a scalloped band at the bottom and white little um, Peter Pan collar and some dots. If you wanna add dots and a little heart like we gave Fred, those are all done exactly like we did his shorts. I put the textile medium down first, then I painted it all solid red. I used our bark brown to do the shading everywhere where you see shading and the I used the wicker white on top I did add just a little bit of highlight on her uh, pinafore here or her little jumper. And that highlight color again was just like his shorts here. Remember that was pure orange with a little bit of wicker white. I did give her a little blush of the cheeks. I should probably hold it up so you can see it closer. I did give her a little blush on her cheeks just like I gave Fred. And remember that was uh, just the apple red kind of pouncing on her flesh areas. Her mouth has got a little heart in the middle, which I thought was kind of a fun treat for her. And then the heart here in the middle, it's probably, oh yeah, it's definitely set up enough. Now I would go back and you can add the icing squirrel around the heart as well, if you like. I did add the word joy in mine. Um, like I said, you could add another word or even write your own name or the name of the person that you might be gifting your apron to even dating it with the Christmas of 2021 would be kind of fun in there. As you can see, the outside edge, this uh, band that where the apron is sewn, I did come back with a flat brush and I just did one stripe of the red, one stripe of the white, one stripe of the red, one stripe of the white. And it helps if you wanna do it all in one time to have two brushes one for white and one for red. So I did my white one, then I went and did my red one. Then I did a white one and then I did a red one. And that way you don't have to keep washing your brush out in between. And it does help you to evenly space. When you look at my checkerboard here, it's exact width of the flat brush. And this is a number 12 flat brush that I used to do the checkerboard. So that's another way you can do that. So let's say I just painted this and I'm gonna move this aside for a minute. I just painted this and now you're wondering what's the next step? You can sign it if you want, you can date it. You can, uh, I always like to sign my artwork and I put my name over here right where the um, band, the waistband comes to the edge there. And I used a permanent fine point Sharpie marker to put my name on the side here. But once your painting is done and you've trimmed out everything that you wanna trim out, perhaps you even signed your name to it. The next thing you're going to do is the hardest part is you need to wait 24 hours. You need to let it completely uh, kind of get tacky and dry to the surface. But then we have to heat set it. So to heat set, I like to use a piece of muslin or an old pillowcase. Um, I'm going to use a paper towel right now as an explanation. 
don't use a shop talent, do use a piece of fabric. This, I'm just using this for illustration purposes. And let's pretend that this is a sheet of muslin. So I'm going to lay my painted piece, paint side up on a ironing board. Then I'm gonna put my piece of muslin on top where my painted design area is. I'm going to heat set this using an iron and I'm gonna set that iron setting to the setting of the fabric that I'm working with. And this is cotton. So on my apron is cotton. So I'm gonna set this to the cotton blend. Do not use steam. You want dry, hot heat. So I'm gonna take that iron with the dry, hot heat, no steam, painted side up, pressing cloth on top. I'm gonna to take it and I'm gonna press. I'm not gonna iron like I'm ironing out wrinkles. I'm just gonna press. And it's again, it's dry, hot heat and count to 30. So go one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi and so on until you get to 30. Then lift your iron up, move it to the next section. Again, press for 30 seconds. Again, move, lift and so on until the whole design has been heat set. And then don't forget about changing it and bringing your muslin uh, sheet out to the edge here if you do do the trim all the way around. This apron also comes with pockets. I'll loop, move this up so you can see there are, is part of a pocket design here at the bottom. There's actually three pockets. Uh, there's a seam here. So you've got one pocket, two pockets, three pockets. You could even repeat some of the design down here or add hearts down here. Wait till everything is all painted before you begin heat setting. But once your design is all painted and you've used that muslin to heat set the fabric, you're now good to go. Do not try and heat set in uh, just by tossing it in a, in a dryer because there's no guarantee that you are effectively adhering the paint in all areas. It's not getting the same equal amount of heat, in other words. So once your item is heat set, you now can wear and wash your um, painted Fred and Ginger, and you can use them over and over and over again. And by washing, you can throw them in a washer and a dryer. Um, but I will tell you that being an artist, I always like to, if I say hand painted, I like to hand wash. But, but if you follow all these directions, you use the folk art textile medium, you use the paints, just as I showed you this evening, everything is good to go and you should be able to uh, wash and wear and enjoy Fred and Ginger, Ginger for many, many um, baking sessions to come. Any questions, Stephen? Uh, no questions that I can see. Just tons of people saying that they think this is super cute. They enjoyed this project. Looks amazing. Thank you so much, Plaid. Um, yeah, people are loving this, Chris. I think this was awesome. Well, great. I hope you have enjoyed the class tonight. And I do want to be able to see your painted Fred and Gingers. Be sure and share them in our Facebook group, Let's Paint with Plaid. Use this, the uh, social hashtag Let's Paint Challenge and Michael's classes. Uh, we cannot wait to see what you paint next. And I want to give you a highlight before we say goodnight this evening. Well, what our, our paint night class project is going to be next Monday night. If you tune in and register for the class, you're gonna to get to paint, we're gonna start painting holiday things. And you'll have a wonderful time with Jessie Jennings. And she is gonna share with you this beautiful um, Christmas tree. And it's really unusual colors. It's very soft and faint and muted. And I think you're just pastel even, you're gonna love it. So join us next Monday night with Jessie Jennings and you're gonna to get to paint this holiday tree. Any mm -hmm. questions, Stephen? Uh, none that I can see. People love that, though, and I think they're going to tune in for that. So we hope to see well, you there, guys. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for joining Stephen and I this evening. I hope you all had a good time, and I look forward to seeing Fred and Ginger. Absolutely. Bye, guys.